Katie Brandt. So I teach the at MSU here at Michigan State University. I teach the Organic Farmer Training Program and do a lot with beginning small scale and urban farmers. Um, and I'm excited to work with you whatever your, whatever your farming background and goals. I'm Sarah Franzak. I'm an environmental management educator with MSU Extension, and I'm also the state SARE coordinator. So we're gonna be talking today about some SARE grants, um, and we're gonna brainstorm together about some of those ideas. Um, and so that's actually how we're gonna get started. Yeah, we're just gonna dive right in. So uh, I was chatting with someone about, um, carbon sequestration in chestnuts. So that's our first idea possibility that we might brainstorm grants around. And maybe chestnuts is not your product, but you're interested in the carbon sequestration, climate uh, mitigation sort of work. Um, I would love to hear from others in the room though. Anybody, go ahead. What, what grants are you excited about? What sort of research or education um, or outreach to farmers would you like to see happening and would you like to be part of? Anybody, anybody? Go ahead. Seed production? All right. <laughs> Excellent. What else? Go ahead. Regenerative farming. Regenerative farming. Great. Can you be a little more specific? Um, like what kind of system maybe is that ever going to be? Um, looking at soil health and sustainability. Awesome. Great. Fantastic. <laughs> I don't know if we fund experimental nuclear bombs. I would have to look into that. <laughs> Lot of soil interest in this group. Anybody else with ideas out there? Go ahead. Pairing young farmers with the older ones? Ooh. So are you thinking like mentorship or more like youth education or a little bit of each? I think mentorship is more what I'm interested in. Awesome. Any other ideas out there? You can almost look at the, <laughs> at the schedule for today's event and scan through and see a lot of interesting ideas I was noticing. So what we were hoping to do is to take some of these ideas and if any of these resonated with you, we will make a table tent for each of these groups of tables and you can choose which one to join. Um, but before we do that, you're going to talk a little bit about SARE grants. Is that right, Sarah? Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. Um, I'm going to pass out uh, pens and post-it notes so that if you didn't want to call out an idea to the full group, you still have ideas to brainstorm your own grants right here. I just need to be able to turn my slide. I need to block your way, apparently. <laughs> Do you want big ones or little ones? Oh, look at that. I got options That was our plan here, for today. So. All right, All right big ones. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this morning, just really briefly, I'm going to go through some grant writing tips. Um, we're going to talk about some general information about the grants, research and education. These are the grants that I'm going to go through because they're the ones we get asked about the most. If these aren't the ones you're interested in, um, we can have a conversation later about the specifics of that. Um, so I'm just going to jump right in and I'm hoping this part will take about 15 minutes and then we're going to do a more interactive part. Um, so just some general grant information. Most funders um, 
don't give you money just to spend on day-to-day -day farming. Um, this is a question I get a lot. Like, can I buy a tractor with this money? Probably not, right? Um, so their grant funders are really asking you to do research about a particular question. Um, so grant programs have specific objectives. Um, government funds are dictated by laws. So um, SARE is a government fund source, and we have specific rules about what we can give money out for. Private funds are usually dictated by mission statements. You can find those things on their websites usually. Um, and you want to just be aware of what those rules or mission statements are. Grant administrators are bound by constraints and they can't change the rules, right? They're just rule appliers. <laughs> They're not rule makers. Um, so you want to make sure that you understand what you want the money for and who you're asking for money and make sure that they want you. Does that make sense? Because like you want to make sure that uh, what you want the money for is something they give money for because that's the good match. Okay. Not everyone qualifies for every grant program. Some grant programs are targeted at specific groups of people. Some of them are targeted at specific kinds of research. So make sure that you qualify for the grant program. Grant programs may have a targeted audience. Some grant programs only fund in certain geographic or demographic regions, right? You might be in a county that has a charitable organization that focuses just on that watershed, for example, right? Thinking about the Herb Foundation, which focuses on the Western Lake Erie Basin primarily, right? Um, so there's these foundations that are very regional and you just wanna make sure you're applying to the right place for where you are. All right, this is another question we get a lot. So you submit your grant and you get rejected. And I usually get a sad phone call the next day and it's like, oh, what did I do wrong? Well, don't take it personal. There's a lot of people asking for money. Maybe yours just wasn't that right for that round of funding. Maybe they had specific objectives for that year and you just didn't fall in line with those things. So um, you also wanna read the reviewer comments. Those reviewers spend a lot of time writing those comments and they take them seriously. Um, and if they're telling you that you need a certain element to qualify for the grant program, then you need to write that element in. Um, and if you can't, maybe that isn't the right grant program for you. Um, you wanna try to, I suggest rewriting as soon as possible. Um, and then revisiting what you wrote before the next grant cycle. Um, because in that like fresh pain of being rejected, you're gonna do better work than, than like if you put it off and you forget about how passionate you were about it, okay? So do the rewrite, wait to the next grant cycle, revisit and resubmit. Um, you wanna address those negative comments, but don't get discouraged um, that process is really what makes your grant better um, and it'll help you be a better grant writer as you go forward. So what is SARE? Well SARE stands for Sustainable Agricultural Research and Education. It's a USDA program and the grants and outreach are there to advance sustainable agriculture in America. In Michigan we're part of a region called the North Central region and all the grants that we we'll talk about that are when we say like North Central are going to be competitive in that region, which is basically the Midwest. Okay. So Sarah was started in 1988. It was um, conceived as a decentralized science based grassroots practical problem solving, right? All these things was different than what we had had versus that like top-down research model, usually in agriculture. This is very much a bottom-up grassroots, comes straight from the farmer in the field, ideas for research. So successful SARE grantees are engaged in projects that are guided by three sustainability principles. Um, I usually think of them as uh, economics, environment, and community. Another way to say it would be like stewardship right, environmental stewardship, 
profit over the long term or the economics of that farm and the quality of life of the farmers and ranchers, but also of the community that surround it or are involved with that farm. When you write a SARE grant, you should talk about all three things. If your grant is focused on one of these things, it's going to fail. Stakeholder involvement is very important. Um, it needs, the problem needs to be identified by the farmer and rancher and the researcher. So if you're, like I'm, I'm an extension educator, right? Um, so if you're a farmer and you want my help uh, with a SARE grant, I'm happy to like partner with you or one of my colleagues can partner with you or I can find you a researcher on campus, but that problem should come out of the farm, right? That problem shouldn't come from us. Um, we really would like to have farmers and ranchers involved in the research and the outreach, right? We love to have farmers teaching farmers about farming. So these are the different types of grants. We have research and education, professional development, graduate student, farmer, rancher, youth educator, and partnership. If we have a bunch of handouts that are pretty much go through like what these grants are um, and happy to, you can take whatever ones of those interest you. We'll get them laid out or something. You can grab them as you go. Um, so we're gonna talk about research and education grants. Um, these include a strong outreach component uh, they're the significant end user is going to be the farmer rancher or it's going to be like agriculture professionals right um, and the, the end user involvement should be throughout the whole thing so um, if your goal is cattle farmers you should have cattle farmers involved the whole time okay and these awards can actually pretty significant, okay? They last for up to um, 36 months, um, and then there's usually that end year or so is usually the outreach portion, right? Um, the next one is the Farmer Rancher Grant Program. Um, this is grants directly to farmers and ranchers to explore some new question about their farm or about a market um, and different approaches for how to make their farm work. It should also, you want to keep the thought that like this might be reproduced on other farms, right? The, that you're going to be taking enough data as you go to share that with other people. So this is um, 15 to $30,000, depending on how big your team is. And you're encouraged to work with universities um, or other nonprofits. It's really helpful because they can help you with the fiduciary expenses. Um, like if you don't want to be the person that's managing writing grant reports, it's really good to get a nonprofit involved because they've written grant reports, right? Like, I mean, I just got done writing all my grant reports for the year. I wrote like five. Um, so if you or you're like, I need help with that, that's what we're here for. Partnership grants are for on-farm research, demonstration, and educational projects. Um, there are two-year grants for about $50,000. And so you're gonna work with an ag professional, like a consultant, a extension person, on a conservation district. Um, and you're gonna work together um, on a specific project, right? Um, I see a lot of these two at like, or like, like city gardens, like uh, that are for nonprofits that are, have a social component to them. And then like also a food production component. We've seen a lot of these people, uh, these grants go to that kind of a situation where there's two organizations that have a similar goal, but different like mission statements. <laughs> Um, youth educator grants. I like to bring these up because I think they're nice starter grants. Um, they're only $6,000. You want to start a greenhouse at your school? 
this is where you go, right? If you want to um, have an after school program about bees, right? <laughs> so this is a nice place to start if you've never done a grant and you're um, doing a lot of um, like uh, community outreach level uh, agriculture. Sarah, we give out money for grants. We also have a lot of research that's been made into outreach materials. Um, so we have a library of how-to books. I actually brought some of them with me. Um, so if you're interested in some books, I have free books. Uh, this one's Building Soils for Better Crops. This is Managing Cover Crops Profitably. This is just two of a whole bunch of things that I have in my crate. Um, and um, these are all available in print for a small fee. I think this is like 20 bucks um, plus shipping. Um, but you can get them for free on the website as PDFs. Um, and I actually have some USB drives on our demonstration table. Demonstration table. The, what is it called? Sponsorship, whatever. Our you know, our booth. <laughs> um, so if you want to pick up a USB drive that has everything loaded onto it. So we have all the books that are available on those drives. We also have um, bulletins uh, and all of the reports from these things are all available on the website. So you're like, I'm really interested in, I don't know, like, I don't know, beehive maintenance and health, right? And you're like, I'm going to go look. Well, there's probably a Sarah report about that there somewhere. Um, it's really easy to filter it. So if you've got a rainy day to, to poke around there, I think it's worth it. Um, so there's also lots of different stuff that we do. Um, so Katie and I are in Michigan, obviously, <laughs> but um, there is a SARE person like me in every state. Um, so I don't, I'd say that because I don't know if any of you came from like Indiana or <laughs> Ohio. So um, the, there's definitely, there's us all over the place. And in Michigan, we have smaller grants to give. We do conference sponsorships like this. We also do um, mini grants, which are, um, I, usually, I, I do a lot of them for conservation districts that are doing um, environmental sustainability-based programs to help them run that program and do that outreach. Um, we also provide these materials free of cost most of the time to people that are interested in giving them out as part of a professional development program. So if you wanted to hold a training on your farm for other farmers, let me know. I'll get you stuff, okay? Um, I'll even come and talk if you want to. Um, and then uh, the other thing we offer is um, travel grants. So if you want to go attend a sustainability conference and you would like funding for that, um, come ask me. Uh, and I will, I will look at the conference, make sure it falls in line with what Sarah does, and I can get you funding for that. Okay. In state, it's up to $500. Out of state, it's $1,500 to $2,000, depending on plane tickets, right? Um, so we do a lot of stuff. If you want more information about um, North Central SARE, this is their contact information. Give you a second to like jot that down or take a picture. Um, it's also like on all of these things, I'm guessing. Yeah, it's at the bottom of all of these. I've been passing out materials, so this may be repeat of what Sarah already said, but one of the things I love about Sarah Grants is they're a nice entry point into grants. If you feel like, I don't really know grant ease because there really is a language to grants, um, this, is, this is a place that might be a good start. Um, they don't require you to know all the language of outputs and out, I don't know. Yeah, it's not like a federal, like NIFA grant which is, yeah. Uh, yeah, don't do that. Don't do that as your first grant. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, unless you're working with somebody who has that experience. Yeah, sure. of course. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah. That's not the deep water you want to step in. <laughs> um, 
And then if you're interested in contacting me, this is my information. Um, if you really just want to talk to Katie, and that's okay, you can write me and, and ask for Katie. You know. um, I will just, that's fine. Um, so we're available to help out and to just be here. Like if you're like, I have an idea and I want somebody to talk to you about it, we'll get on Zoom and chat, okay? Okay. You all set? I think so, that's all my awesome. slides. I mean, I can just do Great. them all again. Well, we had a lot of people come in <laughs> since the start, and I would love to brainstorm some more ideas okay. for our breakouts. Question. Go ahead. Um, I, I don't think there's any match. There is no match there, requirement. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, he was asking about match requirements for stair grants. I don't think there's any match requirements for stair grants. And for people for whom that term is new, a lot of grants say, there's a 50% match. We'll give you $100,000, but you need to go out and find $100,000 somewhere else to match yeah. that. Yeah, I'll give an example. So um, 319 watershed grants, if you're familiar with those, those are through um, Eagle. Those are 35% match, I think, right? So they really vary from grant to grant. Mm -hmm. And if you are looking at those bigger grants and they have a match, look at it closely. Sometimes they have an exemption if you're working with um, underrepresented groups, people of color, low-income communities, etc. All righty. So right at the top of the hour when we started, go ahead, question. One more question. Yeah. So one that caught my eye, there was some that was bought up to like 10 to 14, up to 250000 a year. Are those funded to like support that money at that max value? Or what is the pool of money that you're looking for? Yeah, so the $250,000 research and education grant if you wrote a budget and a proposal that was funded and your budget was for 250, you could be funded for that full amount for the 250,000 um, and they fund multiple. If your proposal only required 125,000, you could certainly write a budget for that. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'm just curious about the amount of money that everybody is competing for. Like mm, oh, the bigger total pool. funding, yeah. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Did, was that on my slide? It said up to, I think it said some number up to right here, 10,000 10, 10, to 250,000, and it funds 10 to 14 projects. So yeah. is that 14 at 250, or is that? It depends, right? Because this is all connected with the farm bill. Uh, okay. Yeah, so it could vary. Like if they get more money dumped into this pool, then it'd be more, less, depending. Yeah. Um, you know, some of these, I've been on some of these projects that are $65,000, and I've been some that's $250,000. Um, so, depending on the goals of your project, or how long it's going to last, um, that, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> One thing I would say, um, from having been on review committees, I was on a review committee for the youth grants. It wasn't like if two people wrote grants that were half the maximum that their chances would go up because they're like, oh, we can afford to do two because right. they're asking for less money. It's still a lot of coordination for the organization. So they're just comparing what are the best ideas and does their budget make sense for their proposal. Yeah. You don't get bonus points for asking for less money is what I'm trying to say. Um, I would say the, a similar thing on all the review committees for these I've ever been on. Um, money was the last thing you look at. You First you look at the idea and the merits of that. Are they falling in line with those three sustainability um, topics? Are they, it's a solid idea with a solid team. If, if we've got a solid idea with a solid team, I'll give them all the money. That's my feeling. Because I, I, then I know that that's, that's going to do what I want it to do. Yeah. yeah. Could you flash those three topics as it once again? Just so I got yeah. This is also on the STAIR website. So if you poke around there long enough, you'll hear this <laughs> message a couple hundred times. <laughs> yeah. And they also have like successful grant reports on there, right? 
So that'll also have like an introduction that includes kind of the, that philosophy and how to voice that. So reading those things will help you get the right like uh, vibe. I don't know. Like that. You just make sure Feeling. that you're covering everything they're asking you to answer in the request for proposals um, mm -hmm. is huge. Just read through that with a highlighter or however you want to take notes so that you're saying everything they want to know and answering yeah. all the questions. Um, okay, so I'll give you one more point. I think I have a pet peeve when I read these things uh, that people spend almost the entire like introduction telling me about their philosophy of like life. That's not what that's for. That's not, you don't, like that section is to tell me how this project fits the, the program request, right? That's not about you. So it, it, there isn't a lot of words. I think they're like, what, 500 words at the most, 300 words? That's not a lot of words to tell us what you're interested in. No. Okay. I think we need to do your All thing. right. Yeah. So those of you who've come in since the beginning and those who were here and have had more time to think, um, these were kind of the ideas that people thought would be useful to brainstorm in smaller breakout rooms. Um, I made table tents and maybe I'll go grab them. I kind of combined these two but everything else got its own category. Um, and, and if people see other combinations, that great, that's great. But what should I add? Are people doing, uh, you know, youth education? Go ahead. Um, I was going to biodiversity, Great. All right, everything you said we're going to encompass in biodiversity because I'm a slow writer. <laughs> Other ideas in the room? You just said you said education. Yeah, let's put it up there. Oh, Wrong room. All righty. Does this feel like it encompasses your, your goals? Or did you come in hoping to brainstorm another grant? All right. Well, let's go with this then. We just need to write up one for biodiversity and one for youth. And I can add these to the tables and we'll redistribute. We'll do musical chairs. So seeds, soils, carbon sequestration, climate mitigation, soils and nutrients in foods, I think a good place to start is to find the post-it notes that are on your table and write down two ideas that you bring to this, two things that you think would be a good grant idea, and get those down. Once you've done that, you can discuss as a group, maybe combine some of the ideas, maybe come up with new ideas in your discussion, and choose one or two that you want to think through more. So what we'd like you to do are plan goals, activities, potential partners, what kind of grant you're looking at, and have one um, budget, like, like a little pencil budget. Like we think it might cost this much, and these are kind of our big budget items, right? I know that's a lot. And there's, <laughs> there's more here than you can do by the end of this talk. Definitely. But this is kind of a format. Yeah, you've got, yeah, you've got 15 minutes. <laughs> Go! <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so what we're going to have you do, I know you're not done. I understand that. Um, but hopefully you've started getting a lot of good ideas and you've started making those connections and partnerships. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go from table to table, have you share out your idea really briefly, um, and no more than a minute and a half. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, I'm just going to pass the mic around to the tables. Okay. So the, the grant would be to develop special needs and foster care uh, a ranch that would focus on teaching agriculture, animal care, 
Uh, the goal will be to develop social behavior and uh, cultural needs in the, in the community. Um, did you want me to, is, that's good enough? Is that good enough? Okay. Fantastic. And I, I think the well-timed child thing. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. okay. Um, so you want to pass it back to Food Access? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so we didn't get far, but this is what we have. So we have um, Food Access, and our grand idea is to educating children about growing food. And that would be the Youth Educator Grant. Um, max funding is up to $6,000. It's due um, on, in November. And the grant goals that we've listed so far is to teach children where food comes from, to train the next generation of young farmers, and to um, have youth working at local farms with all the aspects of farm um, production, sales, harvesting, um, business processes, and things like that. Yeah, so we talked about building the capacity for agricultural educators in the region to teach about seed production, because a, a, a lot of farmers and growers are interested in producing seeds for, them, for their own use or to sell those seeds commercially, but there's a lack of uh, expertise among extension and among educators kind of at large about the foundations of seed production. So we would, we were talking about offering a, a training program for educators to learn about seed production so then they could take that to their communities and work with farmers and, and other growers in their area to, to build that capacity of, in the region. All right, um, so for our uh, mentorship of new farmers, so it, it is a very, uh, very complex issue. And I, of course we were like just starting to skim the, the, the top of it, but, um, I think the, the things that we're trying to solve are getting new students into, uh, into spaces where they can learn from current retiring farmers, um, having access to land access, um, help with financing and succession plans to make sure that the agricultural uh, assets that are available here in the state uh, can move on to the next generation, um, that we can continue to uh, have great greater working uh, production farmers. Um, so that could be working with MSU or other educational institutions on building agri uh, curriculums, as I had heard mentioned, getting students out to uh, the farms for uh, getting hands of the dirt and, and uh, great educational opportunities like that. But um, just real world, real life experience, you know, understanding that mother nature isn't always uh, kind to the bottom line and making sure that we can, uh, you know, help find creative solutions together. But having that mentorship program and a succession plan um, from the retiring to the, the new um, organization. So we're, we're gonna keep working on it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Biodiversity group, go ahead. Okay, we had, um, so ours was adding a, uh, a pollinator habitat for our example today was specifically butterflies. Uh, so we said that the, uh, it would increase, one, the butterfly population it would also increase community engagement and or education through the activities that we do out there. And it would increase soil health as far as having that habitat and the na native plants. Uh, as far as the grant activities, so the education and uh, education on native pollinators, so understanding what is native and what we could put in and what the benefits are going to be. Uh, site prep design and implementation, as well as uh, comparing the data from previous to before with quality of life, quality of health, the soil health if there were plants around it growing, if those were better before or after. Uh, so price, uh, we were looking at roughly $2,000 an acre from start to finish. So depending on the size, if you were doing a small little habitat, then that price would go down. If you were doing two acres, the price would go up. Uh, and then you had some partners, potential yeah, we partners. Could potentially partner with, uh, I think Chad suggested like uh, in the urban environment, um, city planners, parks department, neighborhood associations, something like that. And then also the Xerces Society promotes biodiversity and invertebrate, um, like farming for invertebrates, and also maybe local conservation districts. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, Xerces funding for those pollinator gardens would be a great fit. Uh, I think this is our last group. Soils. Here we are. Okay, we came up with an idea to basically better understand the relationship between uh, working and managing maybe lead and other heavy metal contaminated soils. 
So just doing like long, like robust, like long-term robust sampling of both soils and crops and other plant materials that come out of them and using like, you know, different scenarios, whether we're looking at, you know, how does long-term perennial vegetation um, look like in those lead contaminated soils or is it in-ground crops or are we using raised beds? So just kind of like looking at a bunch of those different ways that you could work those soils and um, just, yeah, better, getting better data, like, so, yeah. Great. As she's passing those out, I have one last announcement. Um, if you're doing a grant other than SARE grants, Michael Fields Institute helps with editing and planning other grants, particularly Michael Fields Institute. I believe they're in Indiana, but they work in Michigan as well.